Hey guys, welcome to Mars or Bust. I'm Spaceman Dave, and today we're going to take a look at what's going on out there in Boca Chica, Texas with SpaceX. So stick around, I'll be right back. Please hit like and subscribe. It lets myself and YouTube know you're enjoying these videos. Yeah, we're here in SpaceX is having a few issues out there in Boca Chica. We got word that at 1 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, Elon called all his workers together and gave a little pep talk. Actually, it was probably more like a bitch fest. From what I'm hearing, he was not a happy guy. But then again, how would you expect him to be when your workers don't tell you they've got a problem and just move on with the process? Then they end up blowing up your rocket. I tell you what, I just hate it when that happens, don't you? We've all been kind of just sitting here scratching our heads wondering why things are happening the way they are out there. Well, this kind of explains it. Elon says the last issue was due to a thrust puck. This is what the thrust puck on the SN1 looked like. The thrust puck is welded at the very bottom tank in the bottom of SN1. This is what absorbs all of the thrust and pressure that comes from the Raptor engines on liftoff. Apparently, this was not welded correctly on SN1 and caused the failure. From what we're hearing, the engineers had some issues with this but never informed Elon of the problem. Again, another good reason to be a little upset. The next problem was they're a little short-handed. Apparently, there wasn't a lot getting done on night shifts out there because they were short manpower. They weren't able to run the number of shifts that they need to to make this happen as quickly as Elon wants it to happen. Normally, when you have a guy that's as hands-on as Elon Musk, you don't keep something like this to yourself. You go directly to the man and let him know what's going on. I would say, in more cases than not, he has an answer. Can you imagine what it was like when he found out about this? I'm sure he wasn't very happy at all. I know I'd be pretty pissed. And we're not even looking at the money that's being spent every day out there to make this happen. So Elon decided to take SN2 down to its individual tanks and parts and test each one separately. At least, if something fails, they're not going to lose the whole ship. There's two tests they run on each tank, and any one of them could cause a problem to the entire ship. So what they're doing is a hydro test, also known as a hydrostatic test. They fill it with water, bring it up to a predetermined pressure, and hold it there for a certain length of time, and release the pressure. Then, they're doing a cryo test. They fill the tank with liquid nitrogen, bring that up to a pressure, and hold it there for a certain length of time, and then release the pressure. Both of these tests are normally done at 1.5 times design pressure, and held for 20 minutes. These were the same tests they were doing before, but unfortunately Starship didn't hold the pressure. It's a lot better to have these in separate pieces, so if they don't hold, you're not destroying the whole ship. Now I know SpaceX is going a lot faster than the other guys, but the question is, are they doing it the way they should be doing it? The way they're putting together these spacecraft is totally different than anything we've ever seen before. Just in comparison, Take a look at these. Here's one of Blue Origin's ring sections being built at Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Here's some of SpaceX ring sections being assembled in Boca Chica, Texas. Here Boeing is assembling one of the head sections for SLS in Huntsville, Alabama. Here SpaceX is assembling one of their tank heads in Boca Chica, Texas. Here SpaceX is assembling one of their tanks for the Falcon 9 in Hawthorne, California. And here, SpaceX is assembling the first stage of the Falcon 9 in Hawthorne, California. And finally, here's SpaceX assembling Starship in Boca Chica, Texas. 
Do we see anything different between these manufacturing processes? I sure do, namely inside and outside. Assembling things outside in an environment that requires the material being kept at a certain temperature in a certain position and covered in a shielding gas on both sides all the time of the welding process. This is not easily maintained with the wind blowing and throwing dirt and dust all over your parts. Now this is a welding process called friction stir welding. This type of welding process is currently being used for Blue Origin's new Glen rocket, DSLS and the Falcon 9. But this is how they're welding Starship. And I can hear it now. They can't weld Starship that way because of the type of the metal. Well, guess what? You're wrong. They actually do have a process now in which they can friction stir weld stainless steel. And this is what it looks like to friction weld 301 stainless steel. The equipment is very expensive, but for this application, I think it would be worth it. Now, it may seem in this episode like I'm beating up on SpaceX. That's not the case. I want nothing more than to see them succeed. This is the reason I'm going over some of these things in the hope that some of these ideas are implemented. I do have to admit that SN3 looks a lot better than its predecessors. I think with every new version, the quality is getting better and better each time. I think the reason this is happening is because they're doing more and more of this work in a controlled environment. Give me your thoughts down in the comments. This here is the mob. These are my patrons. They're some amazing people. You guys stick by me week after week. I have no words to describe how happy I am you're part of the mob. Thank you so much, guys. And you too can join the mob for as little as $1 a month. Check it out in the description.